Hello, Pastor Patrick Hines here, and after uh, some super duper crazy busy weeks, I'm gonna try to start uh, doing a little more podcasting and stuff, and a little bit, a little bit shorter programs. Um, here in my backyard, I've been working. We dropped three trees in our. our I'll show you. We're building a little thing for a, a swing. Uh, there were three trees over there. We're also building a, a garden. Like, where is that thing? Can you see it? You can kind of see it. It's like over there. Anyway, I'm back here with my, my other neighbors, the cows, <laughs> in the back of my yard. And of course, uh, my, my daughter's dog, say hi, who is always constantly bringing me her frisbee to throw. Uh, but I wanted to share uh, some thoughts, and there's one of my kids. Say hi, Ruth. Hi. And uh, I wanted to share some thoughts about a verse of scripture that, man, really jumped out at me. And I, I think, I, this is terrible, I think a few years ago I did a whole sermon just on this verse. Um, I was reading, just reading the Old Testament, reading through Jeremiah, and then read the book of Lamentations. And Lamentations is a very important book. It's a profoundly sad book. It's a lament. It's Jeremiah looking at uh, the ruins of Jerusalem and, you know, the smoke rising and and just the, the calamity that had come upon Jerusalem when it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar and the people were carried off into captivity. But the book of Lamentations um, has got some wonderful things in it. You may, I'm sure um, people are familiar with the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <clears throat> and uh, I'll show you a little story about um, the book of Lamentations uh, that's very, very uh, precious to me <clears throat> as a person. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's Lamentations 2.14. It's just one verse. Uh, it's one of the, the, the book of Lamentations is short. It's, I believe it's five, five chapters long. Five, I think. Yeah, five excuse me, um, it's just a lament, it's uh, people, uh, it's Jeremiah weeping over the people of Israel being taken off into captivity and Jerusalem being destroyed and everything else, but he kind of reviews what got them there. <clears throat> in chapter 2 in your English Bible will have a heading usually that says something like God's anger with Jerusalem, and it kind of goes over what happened and what kind of some of the things that they did that got them in trouble. <laughs> There's a big old cow. Are there more coming over here? There's one. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't go to the bathroom right in front of everybody. Anyway, I had never seen cows up close until we we moved here to um, Northeast Tennessee. But I love it. I love that there's like 400 acres of. Oh, there's oh, it's a mama, a mama and a baby. Look at that. Yeah, they just reproduce and there's like little babies, the cows, like the where it says in the Bible that they skip about like calves. Is that the end? Is that the end of um, Habakkuk or Micah? I can't recall where that is but um, anyway so, yeah my dog is an honorary cow she comes over she'll lick them on the noses <laughs> okay well anyway so that's that's life here in northeast tennessee i love it though it's i live in one of the most beautiful places in the world and uh all the cows are coming over here why are they all coming over here UA. oh could, UA. are they seriously coming to see the dog, yeah, the dog. wow that's ruth say hi okay <sighs> Anyway, so back to Lamentations 2.14. 2.14. Yeah, throw the frisbee so she runs away from me. You wait, drop it. Lamentations 2.14. This is why it's hard to do these at home. Lamentations 2.14 says, Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. Okay, now, the prophets of Israel were supposed to give the words of God, and Israel was over one, overrun with false prophets, and they constantly were seeing false and deceptive visions and prophesying, you know, what they thought in their own hearts. But listen to this. Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not uncovered your iniquity. They have not uncovered your iniquity to bring back your captives, but have envisioned for you false prophecies and delusions. I mean, hear that. Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not uncovered your iniquity. I mean, isn't that one of the problems of the church today? It doesn't want to call anything sin anymore. And those of us that make a, an honest attempt to just okay, be faithful positively to the, the teaching of, of Scripture, but also recognize there are cultural sins that have to be addressed, that have to be dealt with. And we've got to call these things what they are. Like the whole transgender thing and the whole LGBT thing and homosexuality. There's, there's no such thing as, as gay people. People are like, what do, you, what do you do with gay people? It's, it's not a real thing. 
because orientation is not a real thing. We, we've got to call that out. The prophets in Israel did the same thing, and it got it got them completely destroyed. Not, I mean, not completely. A, a remnant was taken. It got the northern kingdom completely destroyed. Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not uncovered your iniquity to bring back your captives, but have envisioned for you false prophecies and delusions. So this is the word of God here, and this is the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet because nobody listened to him, and God told him, nobody's going to listen to you. And he chides the prophets that would be pastors today in a rough parallel. Obviously, we're not prophets in the sense that um, we get fresh or direct revelation from God. I mean, we are to proclaim and minister and declare the word of God in scripture. But there's a, a loose parallel there. These are the people that were supposed to give the truth, the word of God, to the people of Israel. Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. So many ministers, I think, today are doing that. False and deceptive visions. You know, yeah, all the uh, charismania, um, people saying God said this, God said that. We have a vision of this, a vision of that. They have not uncovered your iniquity. That's the that's the part of this that is the most disturbing. That's the part that is is the worst. If those that have the ear of God's people do not call sin what it is and call people to repent of everything that they need to repent of, they are just as guilty as the false prophets that were not entirely responsible because ultimately we as individuals are responsible for what we believe and what we, um, what we, uh, how we live. We are responsible, but our leaders and our teachers, they certainly bear some responsibility there. They have not uncovered your iniquity. A church that will not speak prophetically to the culture, a church that will not call sin what it is and call people to repent of it, is not being the church and is not speaking prophetically to the culture around us. What is that cow doing? Dad, look at Yue. Yue what is she doing? <sighs> I really thought this would be a, a, a great time to do this. Okay, anyway. All right, this will be some comic relief. <laughs> okay. They have not uncovered your iniquity. This is Jeremiah writing here. They have not uncovered your iniquity to bring back your captives but have envisioned for you false prophecies and delusions. And every time I read that, that passage of scripture, verse, verse 14 of Lamentations chapter 2, I can't help but think of the Revoice Conference and uh, people standing up and saying, it's okay, it's okay to be gay, just, just promise to be celibate and, and all, all this kind of thing. And uh, the, the the toleration of false gospels and false doctrines of saving faith and everything else. Delusions. They've not uncovered your iniquity. And that's not an easy thing to do. And that's uh, often going to meet with opposition. To preach against iniquity and to uncover iniquity and to speak the truth about it. But that's what prophets and ministers of the gospel, prophets in, in Israel of old and ministers of the gospel are supposed to do today. They're supposed to uncover the iniquity and call people to repentance of it. Because the thing is, if you don't see the depth of your sinfulness, then what's the gospel? If, if people who preach the word and minister to the people of God and minister to the lost, if they do not call sin what God calls a sin, if they don't tell people what they will be sent to hell for if they don't repent of it, then we're every bit as guilty as the people that led Israel astray. Now, the false prophets and the people who don't uncover iniquity, they were the most popular people in Israel. And people like Jeremiah, it was like, well, Jeremiah, uh, going back down in the well, man. Hope you like it down there. Hope it's not too cold. They were treated terribly. They were persecuted. I mean, the prophets, especially during the reigns of, of people like Ahab and Manasseh and other wicked kings, the, the good guys were, were treated terribly. And there's, um, there's a, a, a narrative in the, uh, the historical record there. I can't recall the, the reference, uh, but Jehoshaphat goes to see Ahab. <laughs> and they're thinking about going to battle. I forget who it was against. I, I think it might have been against um, Syria, maybe. <clears throat> but Jehoshaphat asks Ahab, don't you have any prophets here? Yeah, there's one left. 
but I hate him because he only speaks evil about me. <laughs> you think, okay, well, yeah, because Ahab, you're a really evil guy and you do lots of evil things and he's just telling you the truth. And of course, you know, I think his name was Micaiah that comes along and until he uncovered iniquity. And what do many ministers and prophets get for doing that? They're hated. They're, they're mistreated. They're lied about. They're slandered. They're thrown down into the well. Nobody will come and listen to them. But you know, the Christian church today in America is, is not having a whole lot of impact because it doesn't preach the true gospel often at all, um, if it even understands it much, if much of it even understands it anymore, but it doesn't speak prophetically. It doesn't uncover iniquity. Instead, it pre preaches falsehoods and delusions. Like, yeah, all the LGBT stuff is all good. It's okay. You know, all these compromise side B position, all this stuff that's going on is plain and obvious to the people of God that this stuff is poison to the soul. So anyway, um, this has certainly been an interesting uh, little time here in the backyard. Uh, but yeah, there's the, I'll give you a little panorama shot. There's uh, the, the barbed wire fence. So, so thankfully they can't come over here and like, you know, try to uh, eat the leather off my Bible or something. But anyway, come over here, Ruthie. Y'all get to meet my, my beautiful blue eyed little, my ninth child. This is Ruthie. Say hi. Hi. I love this little, this little one. Um, how old are you now? Are you? I'm seven. That's unbelievable. I cannot believe that. How is that even possible? <laughs> Gracious child. Anyway, so this is my Ruthie B. Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching or for listening.